And again, use the Q&A panel. And this is gonna be fun. This week's gonna be a little bit different. Um, I, I actually got a feedback from one person who attended last week who was frustrated because I wasn't doing any teaching. And um, I'm not really even sure what that means, but, but this topic is not something really where I can give you or anyone can give you a checklist where you check off all of these things and then suddenly you have a good story, right? I mean, it's not quite that easy. So it is, this is gonna be a fun one though. We're gonna do some exercises that I think are gonna help you get to your story. We're gonna watch a quick video. And um, like I said, lots to cover. So I'll get right into it. Um, so here's what we are gonna cover. And it looks really brief. So we're looking at like, how do we, like what's your story? And how do we get to your noble cause? Like the why, of, what you, of why you do what you do, why your district does what it does. We're even gonna look at why you serve in your district in whatever capacity you do. So there's some exercises um, I'm gonna ask, hopefully somebody's gonna be brave and be willing to share. We're gonna actually jot down a few notes. Um, we're not trying to write anything brilliant, but we're gonna jot down a few notes as we go and I'm hoping you'll be willing to share whether it's in chat or Q and A or you can just chat me up and say, hey, I'd be willing to speak out loud if you want to, and I can allow you to talk. So we're in the webinar format, which just makes it a little awkward. So, But I would love anybody who's willing to jump in. Um, I would love it very much. So let's talk about what is your story. So as I mentioned last week, it might be a little bigger than you think. Um, just kind of depends on what it is, like how you talk about you. We looked at this last week. This is not going to be a long process here. But imagine if you are, and I know most special districts are not, but let's say that you're constructing some new resources for your community, whatever those are, whether they're apartments, whether they're, you know, a rec facility or something like that. And you've got this story of, you know, progress, resources, facilities that you're going to build. Um, then we talked about how you can warm the story up just a little bit by talking about jobs, economic growth, the community, what they'll get out of it. We also talked about the people that your district serves. So like, is that your story, right? Is that the big story is, you know, the people you serve. And, um, you know, that might be the ultimate story, honestly, but I want to take it a step further because one of the stories that I feel is rarely, rarely told and especially by special districts who don't seem to be great about talking about themselves, is the story of American infrastructure. So I believe strongly that there are very few people, in fact, polls show this, very few people who understand what special districts do. And I'll bet there are even fewer people that realize that their ancestors probably voted or had something to do with making sure your district was created to provide the services that you provide because the services weren't being provided well by the county or the city or whomever was typically providing the kinds of services that you provide, right? I don't think too many people know that. So I think it's really important that we as a community get really good at telling this story because you're all here because people chose for you to be here. It's a whole different story than you know, the state government or, you know, somebody creating something and telling you you'll have to use it or do it. This is a very different story. So I want to look at some numbers because this might surprise you. Some of you may already know all of this, but this surprised me when I looked it up. So we have 50 states in the United States, of course. And for all of you, I don't know what state you're from. Most of you are probably from California, but we also work with districts in Florida, Utah, Colorado, Oregon, Florida, Utah, Colorado, Oregon, and California. Yep, so five states that we're in currently with customers. But of course, there's only one of whatever state you happen to live in. There are a lot more municipalities, of course. Oh, we've got somebody from Illinois, yay. There are a lot of special districts in Illinois. There are about 3,200 in Illinois, actually, Terry. Thank you for chatting that in. Um, so this is interesting to me. I had no idea how many of these municipalities, whether they're cities or little incorporations or what have you have populations below 5,000, right? So I come from a town of 700, so it's not like I don't know what it's like to live in a small town, but that surprised me. So that's just a huge amount of those are really rural, right? Which makes sense that special districts are needed because those really rural small communities can't provide the kind of services in the way that you can. So here are some numbers just in the states where we currently have customers. 
Um, although I should have included Illinois because we do actually have one library district in Illinois. <laughs> Sorry about that, Illinois. Um, so this is interesting though. So, you know, they break down into these numbers and they're, these are all, you know, what you can find on the internet. So, you know, we can all believe exactly what we see on the internet, but the numbers are kind of hard to track down because um, the, the, there's not really anybody. In fact, I remember when I first started looking at Illinois, I contacted a group, kind of a sunshine watchdog group out there because I figured they would know how many special districts Illinois had. And they really tried to convince me that Illinois didn't have special districts. They were so focused on like state, states or the cities and you know the counties and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, no, 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 you do have special districts there. And then 38,000 special districts across the United States. Of course, that's not an exact number, but it's very, very close, right? So this is kind of how this breaks down. Again, there's about 3,200 in Illinois. And keep in mind, that these numbers often include dependent special districts. So independent special districts, of course, you're a standalone. Dependents are dependent or kind of subservient to the counties that they're in. So like that California number includes dependent districts as well. But this really is interesting. So um, this is like my big joke. It's like, yay, we win. You know, if it comes to just sheer numbers, we win. Um, this is part of the reason why I feel it is so important that special districts really band together to make each other stronger, to learn to tell your stories of all the important things that you do. You do. And I just feel, again, like I said last week, if you saw last week's recording or if you were with me last week, you know, there's the John Oliver video, there's, you know, suddenly you have to do a rate increase and that's the first time anybody knows who you are when you're asking for additional money and they didn't realize you were one of the ones that were taking their money to begin with kind of an awkward time to learn about you. So I want to get us to where we are really telling our story and making the conversation a little bit larger because it could be small. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, my slides just went crazy. Let me get back to where I was. Here we go. Just totally lost everything, sorry about that. So it could be the smaller story of, you know, we just, we provide these services, but also the impact, like I talked last week, making it personal so you're connecting the story to the people themselves, not just talking about yourselves and what you do and kind of this outward facing storytelling, but more of storytelling that connects them through the story to your districts, right? So we talked about that last week, really getting them to know who you are for the world and why you're so amazing. Um, and, and if that's the first time they hear those kind of messages and they didn't know you existed, I'm promise you that that will go better if it goes the other, than if it went the other way. And then connecting them to the larger story of special districts as the infrastructure, right? And as I mentioned, likely their ancestors, if they, if they happen to be multi-generational, um, like my son is seventh generation, having been born and raised in McCallum Hill in my family. And you can be sure because my dad was a firefighter and my dad actually helped form some of the special districts there, that my son knows exactly how the special districts came to be in my hometown, right? So let's start with the why. This is where this is gonna get kind of fun and I hope you will go on this journey with me. Um, you don't have to, there's no requirement that you do the exercises or anything else, but this is gonna be, like I said, a little different than past weeks. Um, so we're gonna start with a TED Talk. This is brief, it's, it's actually about five minutes, a little under five minutes. Um, if you have seen this before, good. It's a good reminder though, or you can grab a cup of coffee real quick. Um, note that while this actually focuses on business, his, his examples are businesses, I really don't want you to worry too much about that and really think about how it does actually apply to special districts as well. So if someone could chat me and let me know that you can hear this okay and if the volume's okay, that'd be amazing. Why, how, what? This little idea explains why some organizations and some leaders are able to inspire where others aren't. Let me define the terms really quickly. Every single person, every single organization on the planet knows what they do 100%. Some know how they do it, whether you call it your differentiating value proposition or your proprietary process or your USP, but very, very few people or organizations know why they do what they do. And by why, I don't mean to make a profit. 
That's a result. It's always a result. By why, I mean what's your purpose? What's your cause? What's your belief? Why does your organization exist? Why do you get out of bed in the morning? And why should anyone care? Well, as a result, the way we think, the way we act, the way we communicate is from the outside in. It's obvious. We go from the clearest thing to the fuzziest thing. But the inspired leaders and the inspire or inspired organizations, regardless of their size, regardless of their industry, all think, act, and communicate from the inside out. Let me give you an example. I use Apple because they're easy to understand and everybody gets it. If Apple were like everyone else, a marketing message from them might sound like this. We make great computers. They're beautifully designed, simple to use, and user-friendly. Want to buy one? Meh. And that's how most of us communicate. That's how most marketing is done, that's how most sales is done, and that's how most of us communicate interpersonally. We say what we do, we say how we're different or how we're better, and we expect some sort of behavior, a purchase, a vote, something like that. Here's our new law firm. Uh, we have the best lawyers with the biggest clients. We have, you know, we always perform for our clients, do business with us. Here's our new car. It gets great gas mileage. It has, you know, leather seats. Buy our car. But it's uninspiring. Here's how Apple actually communicates. Everything we do, we believe in challenging the status quo. We believe in thinking differently. The way we challenge the status quo is by making our products beautifully designed, simple to use, and user-friendly. We just happen to make great computers. Want to buy one? Totally different, right? You're ready to buy a computer from me. All I did was reverse the order of the information. What it proves to us is that people don't buy what you do, people buy why you do it. People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. This explains why every single person in this room is perfectly comfortable buying a computer from Apple. But we're also perfectly comfortable buying an MP3 player from Apple, or a phone from Apple, or a DVR from Apple. But as I said before, Apple's just a computer company. There's nothing that distinguishes them structurally from any of their competitors. Their competitors are all equally qualified to make all of these products. In fact, they tried. A few years ago, Gateway came out with flat screen TVs. They're eminently qualified to make flat screen TVs. They've been making flat screen monitors for years. Nobody bought one. And Dell. Dell came out with MP3 players and PDAs. And they make great quality products, and they can make perfectly well-designed products, and nobody bought one. In fact, talking about it now, we can't even imagine buying an MP3 player from Dell. Why would you buy an MP3 player from a computer company? But we do it every day. People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. When we communicate from the outside in, yes, people can understand vast amounts of complicated information like features and benefits and facts and figures. It just doesn't drive behavior. When we communicate from the inside out, we're talking directly to the part of the brain that controls behavior, and then we allow people to rationalize it with the tangible things we say and do. This is where gut decisions come from. You know, sometimes you can give somebody all the facts and your figures, and they say, I know what all the facts and details say, but it just doesn't feel right. Why would we use that verb? It doesn't feel right. Because the part of the brain that controls decision making doesn't control language. And the best we can muster up is, I don't know, it just doesn't feel right. Or sometimes you say you're leading with your heart or you're leading with your soul. Well, I hate to break it to you, those aren't other body parts controlling your behavior. It's all happening here in your limbic brain, the part of the brain that controls decision making and not language. But if you don't know why you do what you do, and people respond to why you do what you do, then how will anybody how will you ever get people to, 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 to vote for you or buy something from you, or more importantly, be loyal? All right, so thank you so much for bearing with me through that. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I, he really inspires me. You can go look him up on YouTube. He's written some amazing books. Um, but some of the things that he said in there that got me, why do you get out of bed every morning? Why do you get out of bed every morning and why should anyone care? Right, so this is a little bit of a personal journey today. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the personal, move out to the district, and then move out to your community level with a couple of different exercises. And this where I hope it's gonna get really fun for everyone. So this is where like, when we're exploring, you know, the actual district journey, of, like the district story, it's nice to start with your own. So here's our first exercise. And if you would just humor me and, and join me in this. I, I 
can almost promise you that it's going to be very powerful. Now, this is very short. We usually spend a lot more time on these kind of exercises. So I promise to keep these webinars brief. So this is going to be shorter than I would like. But here's exercise one. Why do you serve? So this is about you, whether you are on the board, whether you were appointed to the board, whether you were elected to the board, whether you are a staff person who decided to apply for a job there, whether you've worked there forever or only for a couple of months. Take a minute, jot down why you came to work at your district, okay? Or why you're affiliated with your district. We're gonna go 60 seconds here with some Jeopardy music. Okay, so that was just under a minute and I would, if you would like to um, put it in chat or if you put it, you can chat so you all know, you can chat to everybody, not just to the panelists. You can chat to the panelists and attendees if you want to. So here are some of the things I'm reading. Um, I serve DRD to support the community services team who in turn serves the community. That was Ra Raquel. And Jackie to make my district greater. Terry, I was specifically asked by the EO if I wanted the position. I already had a job, but I left to come to work for her. Well, considering I know who you work for, I don't blame you. I would do that in a minute. Um, Terry, access to information is crucial to survival. Very true. Must be a library district. Um, so, uh, Nancy, why do you serve? Libraries have been important to me all my life. Discovering new things, new worlds, new tech, new life choices. It's lifelong learning at its most basic. I choose what I want to pursue or learn about and it's ever changing. One month, one thing, the next something else, never the same. I enjoy the learning process, not a chore or on my to-do list. That's amazing. Jackie, to keep our community safe. Diane, Louise, I am running this year for the board. I've been here 54 years and I want my son to have the same legacy that my father left me with. I want people to be able to live their lives and die here without being priced out by a water bill. Don't make fun of me. I love the people I work with and their driving compassion from Wendy. Nikki, I came to work for my library district to make my community a better place. I'm passionate about learning and reading. This is why we're going to go over time and I don't care. It's amazing. Uh, Jennifer, I love to connect with people, like to build connections between others, make life more fun. Oh my gosh, I'm losing track here more balanced work-life balance. Nancy applied for the job after the company I worked for closed down. Yeah, that's huge. After 25 years, Marianne, there was a need that needed to be fulfilled and I do those tasks well. I wanted to meet people in my community and I care about the roads in my community. Tyler, an intern for college, very good job. We need more of those affiliated with special districts right now. Michael, I want our community to be better to make it a better place. Nicole, deliver high quality recreation opportunities, places for people to gather. Barbara connects me to my community. Roxana, my name is Roxana and I work for Salton Community Services District. I work there because I want to see changes in our Salton Sea community. Uh, yeah, we are unincorporated and I feel that we need to the trust of our community. Okay, so I'm gonna have to quit here in a minute. Okay, just a couple more. So Laura, I wanna to contribute to effective ethical government in rural communities. Thank you. Water is essential to life, it's so true. Craig, I live in a good community with good people and desire to make positive difference. My dad was involved in California special districts and made a difference. Yep. Great. Jay, helping people when, they're, when they or their situation is at their worst. Kathleen, to make the most difficult time in a person's life as easy, as comforting as possible. Yeah, my cemetery districts are some of the most inspiring I've ever talked to. Katie, I believe our paramedic service provides amazing health care. Oh, yeah. And services to our community. We have the smartest, most qualified paramedics and EMTs around. And Brenna, a friend let me know there was an opening and he saw a good fit for me there. I fell in love with being a part of the community and protecting public health. So there you go. So I can't beat any of those, um, but I made myself go through these exercises the other day because it had been a while. Um, it had been a while. 
So this is mine. I created Streamline because special districts are closest to the people they serve, yet no one builds software for them, specifically for special districts, because their budgets are typically too small. So, you know, all the software is, um, you know, usually big companies looking at big government spending big dollars. So this was my why. And of course, I couldn't be a firefighter anymore, which is my first love. Um, so, um, and I, okay, one last one, Megan, this is great. I believe that life should be more than just about ourselves. I initially didn't want to be a public information officer, but I found a place where I can blend service to others and my love of learning and information. Yeah, see, so you are also brave. Thank you for sharing, um, for being willing to share, for being willing to do the exercises. And I have two more, so I'm gonna just keep moving right along, um, but, but the next one's fun too. So who is your district for the world? So now that you've kind of toned, and we're gonna do this in concentric circles kind of and expanding outward. So we've started with you. Now we're looking at your district and we're gonna look at your community. So exercise two, who is your district for the world? So one of the ways to come at this, and I think I mentioned this last week, I mentioned this all the time, I did a discovery process that includes some of these exercises with a sanitary district. And we went around the table and people read this, um, mission statement, basically. It's, it's your own words, so it's not your official mission statement. I really don't want to necessarily hear that. I wanna hear in your own words who you, your district is for the world or your organization. Um, when I did this one, I got everything from this inspiring, one of the ladies from the call center who said, um, we exist to serve our customers with compassion and protect the environment. And I was just like, wow, right? And then it comes around to the general manager and she says, we keep the poop in the pipes, which, you know, is true. That is what they do, but um, it could be a little more inspiring than that. So in your own words, we're gonna do another 60 seconds. I know that this is fast. You don't need to wordsmith it. It doesn't need to be perfect, but it might be easiest if you start with we exist to dot, 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 and go from there. So 60 seconds, here we go. This is great. So you just got going all in chat. So I'm going to read some of these out of the chat. To Tyler, to better the quality of lives in the community we serve through recreation and character building. That's definitely a bigger story than to put a park out there in case people want it. Um, Jackie, we volunteer to protect life and property in our community and beyond. Yes, you do. Uh, Raquel, we exist to enrich the quality of life for our residents and communities. And community, Jay, we exist to serve the citizens and visitors of Northern Wasco County, Wasco, I hope, when they have an emergency. Uh, Belinda, we exist to create a place where families can come to remember their loved ones and find peace. Brenna, we exist to inform the public about the importance of personal mosquito control measures and keep mosquito populations low for the betterment of public health. Brenna, I'm just gonna a little aside here tell you, first of all, I'm so impressed with mosquito control districts. Um, I live near a river, so. It's just amazing. But the other thing is that I follow some of them on Twitter and I tell you, I take much better care of tipping things in my yard since I started doing that. I've learned so much. Um, Craig, we exist to provide healthy recreational outlets to the community. Michael, we exist to enrich people's daily lives. Jennifer, we exist to be the leaders in providing, wow, experiences every day through parks and recreation. We do that by putting people first. Nancy, get the right info into our community hands fast, whether it's books or other resources. It's not very jazzy, but it's true. <laughs> I don't know, we need jazzy, right? This is great. Regina, we exist to protect life and property in our community. We supply qualified and highly trained individuals to care for our community. Katie, we exist not only to save lives, but also to improve the quality of life for our patients. 
I love that. Wendy, we exist to provide people and resources against threats from fires, medical emergencies, and other disasters, basically to protect property and life in the Little River Albion communities. I hope I'm pronouncing these communities correctly. Laura, we exist to see that our region continues to have economic opportunities and support the state of Colorado in protecting and utilizing water. It's one of the things California has in common with Colorado is water issues. That's awesome. Marianne, um, we exist to maintain drivable roads. That is our gateway to the world. Okay, I love that so much. That's so much better than we make sure there aren't any potholes, right? Brandy, we exist to keep people's lives and businesses from being upended by seasonal flooding or by groundwater scarcity. Fantastic. One of my examples in, in one of my talks was, yeah, flood control agencies. Uh, Nikki, we exist to provide opportunity for everyone in our community to grow and learn regardless of needs or life position. Okay, I gotta have to talk faster. <laughs> Terry, to share the opportunities to learn freely without judgment, to enrich and strengthen the community. <laughs> Brenda, yay, <laughs> Brenda. Um, Nancy, we exist to bring enjoyment to all families together outside of their homes. So important right now. Barbara, we exist to provide clean, clear, potable water potable, potable water, I think, to the members and create community among the members. That's awesome. Kathleen, we exist to create a place of everlasting peace and comfort while remembering your loved ones. Terry, we exist to be the legislative, legislature's watchdog in managing the orderly growth and development in California by special districts and cities. Awesome, awesome. Diane, the mission prior to my skirt lifting was to keep everything hidden from view. I have changed that over the past year. A team of us are determined to have outreach that will knock on the doors of our advanced aged citizen seniors who are being disenfranchised by isolation due to digital meetings. We believe they should be not, for, not be forgotten in the web of the digital world. Okay, that's amazing. Domini, hi Domini. CAWD is critical to the environmental success on the peninsula. This is absolutely true. And Jackie, we help farmers and ranchers with soil and water resources and education programs in schools. So again, um, you are all amazing and I'm super inspired. I realize we're at 1030. We only have a little more, one more exercise. If you can stick with me, if you can't and you have to go, this is all being recorded. So we'll share that as soon as it gets all processed and everything else. So when I did this little resource, this little um, uh, exercise myself, yesterday, this is what I came up with. And it's interesting to me because as you can see, this doesn't say anything about software. Most of what we do, at least what we're paid for is, you know, the software that we build. Um, this doesn't say anything about software. Um, I do a lot of education, like these webinars, which is always free, doesn't say anything about that. It's like this bigger kind of, not in, as inspiring as all of you, but, you know, hoping to lift you up so that you are able to tell the stories that you're telling me today that you're sharing with one another. So. This is awesome. Okay, so now we already know what you discovered because you were also very brave and shared it with me. Um, and I have to tell you how much that means because when you're standing here, probably all of you know this after all these remote meetings, when you're standing here talking at a computer monitor and there's no people around you and you're not getting any, you know, you don't get any eye contact, you don't get any body language, there's, you know, like, you don't know how it's going. So thank you all for being so very brave. And so now we'll do this third exercise, which is kind of fun. So again, we're moving our way out and now we're looking out at the community. Now, a lot of this may be absolutely embedded in your bones. It may be in your blood. You may know this without even thinking about it, but I, I strongly recommend you spend some time with exercises like this once in a while anyway, especially if you do it as a team, because by doing user stories as a team, people who maybe do have it in their blood and in their bones, have the ability to kind of pass that knowledge, that understanding and that passion on to this hopefully younger generation that we're bringing into special districts because we need to be able to do that. And we want them to be as passionate as we are about what we're up to. So the best way to do that is to always be looking outward. So a user story is thinking about what we call your audience. So the person who is paying rates to you, the person who is maybe using your sewer services, the person who is going to your parks, the parents who bring their kids to your library. So those sorts of things, and this is, we're gonna take just a minute again to do a couple of these. So this is the format. And um, we're gonna do the Jeopardy thing again. And we're going to do, um, let me get this up real quick. Just this, as a, 
type of person using your services. I want something so that I can do something, right? Or so that I can accomplish something. So here we go again, one minute. Oops, sorry, I didn't need to stop at that soon. Yeah. Okay. So see what we came up with. So I know this is like so quick, we're just trying to run through this stuff, but you'll have the recording, you'll have the slides and you can take this back. And like I said, it's most powerful, not you sitting in front of a computer doing this with me necessarily, but doing it with your team. So here's a couple of, all right, let me scroll up a little bit. From Tyler, as a rec professional and leader, I want to impact the future generation so that they can be the change we wish to see in the world. That's awesome. Brenna, looking a little outward, as a rate payer, I want a safe, mosquito-free place for my friends and family to live and recreate. I would vote for that one because um, my mosquito and vector control district must be amazing here. Laura, as a constituent, I want lots of cool, clean water so that our community is healthy, productive, and continues to be a great place to live. That's awesome. Wendy, as a member of the Albion community, I want fire protection services so that my property and house don't burn down. Heck yeah. Nancy, as a library district covering over 100 square miles, I want everyone to have a library card so that they experience the joy of lifelong learning, whatever their heart desires. That's amazing. Jackie, as a senior in a remote community, I want someone to respond quickly if I have an emergency so that I can remain safe and survive for many years. <laughs> That's kind of applicable right now. Brandy, as a taxpayer, I want to see the taxpayer dollars are being well spent by people who know it's important to do good work so that the community is served effectively and gets good value for their money. Yeah, really important. Michael, as a resident, I want my community to be valued so that daily lives are happier, which I know you personally, so I know that's a lot of the reason why you do what you do. Cindy, as a community member, I want a sympathetic and beautiful burial experience so that my family feels comfort and closure. You guys are just going to keep trying to make me cry and embarrass me in front of everybody. Um, as an adult, Nikki, as an adult learning program user, I want a place where I can learn without judgment so that I can get my GED. Roxana, as a community resources agent, I want to see more resources for our youth and families so that our kids can have a successful future. Jennifer, as a resident stuck at home with two teenagers, I want positive and healthy outlets so that I don't go crazy. Okay, thank you, because I needed something to make me laugh for a minute. Um, Barbara, as a water user, I want reliable water service so I can live well, thrive, and wash my kids. <laughs> Having raised a boy, I, uh, I would agree with the importance of that one. Okay, you are all amazing, and I'm sorry I'm so emotional. I think it's just everything makes me cry lately, um, this whole COVID thing, and everybody's so angry in the world. Um, but this is awesome and so inspiring. And um, I wish we had more time. Like I said, please, please bring this back to your district. You know, um, it, it, these three exercises can be super powerful for team building. One of the reasons we originally designed them, actually I designed these because I went through one of the most awful discovery meetings I'd ever had in my whole life where I'm trying to bring a team together and they're all bickering over who gets what real estate on the home page. That's all they could talk about. I get to be in the main navigation because our, dist our um, section of the college brings in more money. And it was just this crazy conversation where it's like, oh, and I couldn't get it under control. The website turned out horrible. They weren't happy, we weren't happy, nobody was happy. So I developed this process and we came back and when they wanted to redesign, I brought this process in. And it is so important. It just makes people like, it makes the conversation so much bigger. So it's really, really, really important. Um, just a couple more I'll read. Diane, as a long timer, I want people who paid their homes off, have the right to dignity and safe, affordable, reliable water and infrastructure. 
I want to tap the retiree skill set so that they, that they retired with and get them energized by volunteering and bringing those amazing skill sets to the fore so we can benefit from them. That is amazing. And Marianne, as a resident, I want safe, drivable roads so my vehicles aren't damaged, my house is easily reachable and improves the resale value of my home. That's a reality, right? Megan struggled with this one, new to your org, and, and the building isn't even completed yet, so we're not actively doing what we will be doing. Any tips on how to develop the answers to this one? Megan, I actually feel like that's the best opportunity you could possibly have to actually design this before you're even out in the community. So, you know, you'll get emails from me, Megan, if you would just respond to one and maybe you and I will hop on a Zoom because I definitely have some ideas on how you can develop some answers to these to your imaginary users that are out there. I would love to have that conversation. Um, oh, Craig had to go. Um, great, thank you for the nice words, Craig. Okay, so, so we're just, here's our recap, right? And I don't even know why I recap, 30 minutes is not that long or 38 minutes, so sorry. Um, but here's the things we talk about, your story matters, right? And these exercises that we just did can really help you tap into how to tell it. Um, to just get to that bigger story, that more personal story and all of that. So there's my quick recap. And then this is next week. So these are what our next weeks are going to look like. Next week's going to be packed again because we're going to be looking at some examples of good storytelling, a couple of examples of different ways of telling stories and all of that. Um, Megan, it's fine that you're not a special district. It's fine. I, I love to help anybody. So that, no problem at all. Just send me an email and we'll figure this out. Um, because it all matters, right? I'm not a special district either. And I care about this more than half the districts I know. I'm like, this matters so much. And so we're all in this together. Um, so we'll have examples next week. And then weeks four through six are going to be, if any of you were in my guerrilla marketing webinar series that got kind of cut short because we stopped to teach everybody how to deal with COVID and public meetings, we're going to be going over a lot of that content in weeks four through six. So I'm giving us a whole three weeks to go through and like talk about like now you kind of have developed your story how do you get it out there without spending a ton of money buying a bunch of billboards whatever so that'll be our last three weeks um regina oh that's very nice thank you um i'm glad you like these sessions uh district has been really focusing on telling our stories to the community lately check us out at ecc if only my favorite fire district not my favorite you're all my favorites um especially with Lockwood on here, sorry, Jackie. But yes, Chief Helmick and I, I've got a funny story about him, Regina, so you should connect with me because I can tell you how we started our relationship together on this website. Um, yes, Michael, I will be emailing out the links to the session recordings. Kathleen, you're very welcome. <laughs> oh, you're Shiro. Thank you so much. One thing just to show you all, this is where, if you, if you go to, just real quick, if you go to our website and go to webinars, this is where you can always find the upcoming webinars, including a disaster planning one, the second one in a series we're gonna be doing in November. So that's there if you need it. And then the other thing is the landing page that, let's see if I can get to this. Um, da, 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 da. Here it is right here. The landing page where you registered will also be the same place that I always put up the recordings and the slide deck. So every week when I send you an email, it's gonna be the same link. So hang on to that if you can, otherwise just watch for my email. And um, Thank you for your kind words and thank you so much. Um, thank you so much for spending time with me. I know this is such a crazy time and everybody is so busy. Um, yeah, it's crazy, but it's really nice to connect with you. I'm actually really encouraged about, and this is why I keep telling people to come to the disaster preparedness one, because that one's gonna be a Zoom meeting instead of a webinar. So for those of you who wanna be on camera, you can. And we'll be able to see each other and like work together in a little workshop format. So if you can sign up for that, that would be awesome. Otherwise, thank you. And I will see you all next week. Take care. Bye.